What down, family? It's your boy SN TV coming back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is going to be about none other than 051 Rockhead, aka Spot him, Got him. Rocco comes from that 051 Young Money set. They're off of 51st and Cottage Grove. Rockhead was one of those original members that was around when Young Money and the Met Boys were clicked up and had established YMMB, or Young Money Met Boys. Almost everybody that was a part of Young Money was known for putting in work. We talk a lot about Melly, but Young Money is one of those sets where you gotta catch a body to really be gang. So nearly all of those guys got bodies. They're known as the loose screws for a reason. They beat for 600, Lexville, O Block, Taekwon World, Lamron, GGE, OTV, 800, THF44, and their main beef is with THF46. They cool with sets like MOB, 757, and Geo Drive. Rockhead really was in the streets and what I like to call the beginning stages of the drill scene. This is when a lot of beats were fresh and both sides of most of the street walls had starting lineups of shooters. When taking a life was called the score, when Mubu Crump was keeping the score, when catching bodies and rapping about it and Twitter beefing was at its peak. There's many stories about Rockhead getting wild and it's even been said that he was one of the shooters on a Nooski hit. Life's good, bro. We just got to keep working hard, but you know, we got to move different. You know, the ops waiting to catch us slacking. I'm following them great. <laughs> I'm about to go pick these shoes up from the store real quick. You coming? No, nah, I might chill right here and touch my bitch. All right, I'll be right back. No! What the fuck? No, no! Stay with me, bro. Please! I just saw a young man get shot at the Target on 87th and Cottage. He crashed his car into the store next to Children's Place. The people who shot him left the scene. When I got to him, he was breathing and had a faint, corroded pulse. I told the officers on the scene. They gave me gloves to check. When I told them what I'd found, the Caucasian officer said, do whatever you can to save him. I said, get him out of the car. The AA officer comes up and says, don't touch him. It's a crime scene. I said, he's breathing, he has a pulse. He said, don't matter. The white officer says, let her do what she can. The AA officer says, she can prove her credentials anyway, so don't touch him. I live in hell. His family is there screaming, do something please. I'll never forget his face. 15 minutes arguing with CPD, that boy stopped breathing and his heart stopped. He died and they could care less. I gotta get my babies out of here. R.I.P. Young man, what if that was my husband? I'm with the nigga that did. He don't want to be on camera though. Hit his ass up right here on Pat. You hit? Me? Hey, my boy, yep, right here. You feel me? historic events? Y'all know I'ma bring y'all around this shit. Historic events. Huh? What's your nigga? What? Play with me, boy. I look like no. Though. He ran into the children's place, died like a post now. Goof ass nigga. Rocco got the nickname Spot him, Got him because he was known to shoot at his ops on sight. Wherever he caught them, he would let it rip. 
He also was known for tweeting about every hit that he did, even before he did it. According to Tay Capone, Rockhead tweeted that they were waiting on L.A. Capone before they actually got him. Rockhead tweeted that he was outside waiting on L.A. the night they killed folks. Who tweeted that? On September 26, 2013, eight months before the death of OTF Nunu, Rockhead, Lil Mick, Miko, and Big A were sitting outside of the studio on 71st and Stony Island, patiently waiting on L.A. Capone to leave the studio so that they could take him out. Little did L.A. know, his ops had been tipped off by 757 Hard Knock that he was at the studio that that would be his last studio session. L.A. Capone was at the studio on 71st laying down vocals with his friend J.B. Bin Laden. When he got ready to go, for some reason, he chose to walk out ahead of J.B. L.A. was actually waiting on the cab. He walked out the studio where he was quickly ambushed by Lil Mick and hit in his thigh and lower back. It's been said that if Mick's gun didn't jam, he would have overkilled L.A. for what 600 did to Fats. L.A. would later succumb to his injuries. Rockhead, Lil Mick, and Miko would all confess to their involvement and implicate each other as well. Big A was the only one that escaped prosecution, and that was because she died. Three people have been charged with murder in the September 2013 shooting death of Chicago rapper Lenar L.A. Capone Anderson outside a Southside recording studio. Anderson, 17, had just exited the studio on the 7,000 block of South Stony Island Avenue and was walking through an alley when he was confronted and shot September 26, 2013, said Assistant State's Attorney Alex Molesky. Anderson, who rapped under the moniker L.A. Capone, was struck in the lower back and right thigh and died a short time later, authorities said. Saki Hardy Johnson, 17, and Michael Mays, 21, gave statements admitting to getting a gun before going to the studio, Molesky said. They also admitted to being inside a parked vehicle that would run interference in the event that police officers arrived on the scene, she said. Miko Buchanan was also charged with murder for allegedly being the driver of a tail car, a vehicle meant to insulate a lead car containing a gunman, Molesky said. Buchanan 23 told investigators he watched the shooter sneak up on Anderson and open fire with a 40 or 45 caliber handgun, Molesky said. Authorities did not name the shooter. A month after the LA hit, Rocco would end up in the car with Big A or Amanda Fitch when she was ambushed by THF. It's been said that Rocco backdoored her. Rocco would end up receiving 24 years for his involvement in the LA hit. He is currently residing in the Illinois State Prison Facility waiting to be released. And I think that what we can learn from the story of Rockhead is this. When committing crimes, stay away from the internet. Rockhead was said to be one of the biggest self-snitching tweeters in drill history. He literally tweeted that they were waiting on LA before they actually got him. Also, you must understand that when you choose the streets, you're signing up for a long-term prison sentence or a death sentence. So when your contract is fulfilled, don't snitch. Just lay down and take what's coming to you. This has been another episode of Chirac Street Legends. It's your boy, SNTV. I'm out.